Plus. Hello guys and welcome back to Arquan Welding. My name's Calvin and you join me today uh, making a 12 inch T elbow piece. Um, this was a giant piece to make. It, was, it wasn't too challenging. It was just time consuming because when you're dealing with big pipes, this is 12 inch. Dealing with big pipes, you can't really handball them around. Um, you got longer time spending welding them. But it was fun to do. I was able to show you lots of some clear, nice arc shots. I'm proud of that one. But with clear arc shots, you can see my clear failures. Later on, I'm welding a flange. And because I have to pull the flange out so far, there wasn't much um, flange sitting on the pipe. So it was a big gap. And then while I was welding it, it got too hot and it actually blew through. But it weren't too bad. I just um, rooted the gap in between after and I carried on welding and it came out good. Now back to what you see on the video. So like I said before this is 12 inch pipe. It's shed 20. It's going to be welded to class 2 specifications. So it doesn't need to be welded like an x-ray job would be or a class 1 job. It's more relaxed. For example you can miss 25 mil of root every 100 mil of weld. With that being said, I'm still trying to weld it nicely, but certain steps you will do if it's an x-ray job, you don't have to do like this. For example, my tacks, I can have penetrating tacks and feather them down and weld over them rather than cutting them completely out. So this pipe only needs to pass the ultrasound testing at the moment. If it was a, a class one job, I would weld it completely different, but it's not, so. I'm trying to save as much time as possible. Um, this job here took a couple hours to make, less than half the day. Um, I get paid every pipe I make, I'm on price. So I'm trying to balance quality and speed throughout the whole day so I can make my money really. So that's why you see me do steps and you see me weld it in ways that may not necessarily be the right and proper way to do things. But for me, it works out the fastest and time is money literally for me time is money so I've tacked together this piece completely all in one go now I'm going to try to save my back and bring it down to the floor so I can tack on a handle so I can rotate it and weld it up now like I said in the last video if if you're not allowed to tack on the pipe don't I can so I do we don't have manipulators in my place so we are reliant on this method here and we rarely do positionals we try to roll out everything this here is a little tactic i've developed because my um, captain's wheel is offset to my crane i do this method here and like a charm it goes in every time nice and easy the only problem is if you're not careful and there's too much weight on it um, you just pull your back out almost like when you're trying to turn a shopping trolley and you can just feel it in your back but it's on there now um, I'm going to do a video shortly of me making the counterweights that I've got on the pipe. But here I'm showing you lot the power that I'm using. It's a short circuit arc. It's the root set in the Thronius machine has so I control the amps which is 145 amps. And the Thronius machine controls the rest of the settings to give you a perfect weld. And it also manipulates it slightly um, so you get less heat in it I believe. And the wire one mil solid core wire um, at, in this in this um, video I think I was using two different wires when I started off this weld you see now I'm using copper coated wire and I think we ran out of that and then I was using copper free wire now with the UK and I think the EU laws and regulations are changing and they're restricting you using um, copper coated wire because I think when you burn it the fumes that it gives off is worse but like I said earlier, here's the arc shots, they came out beautifully. The only issue is, because it's not um, a dynamic shot, it's stationary. You can't see what I see, you can't see the keyhole, but I'm working on that. Here I'm cutting through the tacks, so I'll use my 5-inch um, grinder, I use the 3mm cutting disc, I cut through the tacks, and then I move on to my 9-inch grinder, so I can feather the start stop down. So now when I'm rooting, you see um, how it just melts the feathered part down 
and then it transitions back into a root nice and smoothly. Um, part of being a good welder is grinder control. You have to know how to use a grinder. You can't be reckless with it because the more rough you are with the grinder and the more careless you are, um, the more metal you take away and then you can just it just affects your root. So learning how to um, feather is key. And if all goes well, you don't see the transition from your two tie-ins. Here's another example that I'm talking about. So what happened here, I was rooting and I stopped mid-root because I felt my gap getting closed up. So I, I, I stopped it, I prepped it a bit more, I re it out and I carried on. But there, I should have cut back, but I didn't. And you see later on in the root that it's a bit thin there, but it's still in. It's a little inconsistent, but the root went in there nicely. I'm happy with it. So now I'm moving on to my cap. I'm using the grinder just to grind the two corners in case there's any lack of fusions on the side wall. I don't want it I don't want to introduce that into my weld. But it's not needed. I was only doing it, you know, for demonstration purposes. The specifications of this job isn't too crazy where that's needed. But here's the cap. It is a 200, around 240 amps pulse. The pulse welding just allows it to cool in between each pulsation of, of, of the arc. And it keeps it in position, smooths out the weld. If I weren't doing it on pulse, um, the weld won't, won't come out so smooth. Even now you can see there's, there's no splatter coming out of it, it's just going in nicely. Um, when I touch both sides I move on and now I'm coming up to my start stop. I try to focus my arc more down towards the centre of the pipe. I find that um, it melts the start stop away a lot better and it doesn't give you any pinholes. So the cap's done, it's not perfectly smooth. It's got the slightest um, point to it, and that's basically my positioning. I was probably too high up. I should have pulled my torch a bit further down, and then that would have smoothed it off. Here's an example of my tacks once they're feathered down. So the blue part just shows how hot the metal is because it's so thin. And then it allows me now to be able to weld all the way around it, go over them tacks, melt them away, and they still come out nicely in my root. So I'm gonna do that here, both sides, welding it all in one go. Here's a close up view of the prep surface ready to be capped. I try not to grind too much because the more metal you take away, the more metal you have to put in. And there's a balance. Because when you have to add more metal, you end up making the pipe more hot. And um, the heat in the pipe, it, it really distorts and, and affects the quality of your welds. You get a lot of um, uneven surfaces on your cap and it's, it's just a dark color. So you wanna you want to have as much heat as the pipe needs and it can take and then the welds come out smooth. I quickly rearrange my bay so I can bring in the pipe that's going onto this. So it's something like a 3-4 metre length that's going on it.
I've said in one of my last videos how I need V stands with wheels on it because it's it's always risky and dangerous dragging these V stands without any wheels. At any moment it, they can catch on something and tip over. But now it's in position, I'm just rubbing my hands around it, feeling the pipe alignment, making sure it's all good before I move on to the next step. And that will be obviously tacking it together. Um, to save time, I'm going to tack the butt weld and then the flanges together. I don't see the point in doing all the butt welds first and then going back on yourself to level it up the same way just to, put the, just to hang the flanges. When I'm tacking together a piece like this, I like to have uh, deep penetrating tacks. So I do them about an inch long. But here you see where I'm tacking it in one direction, it closes up as I'm going along. So I'm prying open one side before I do the bottom tack because it's just going to be even harder to do later on. lowered the pipe down, taken off the handle that I was using to turn it. I'm going to just check a few spots making sure that it's level to the rest of the pipe and I can put my final two tacks on and then work on hanging on the flanges. So this here is one of the more critical parts of the job, making sure you hang the flanges at the right amount. So I'm measuring a few spots and then I'm going to do the calculation so I know how much to hang the flanges on. And then I'm going to measure the overall. So here I'm writing down the overall measurement, 4,402mm. And the measurement of the pipe without the flanges is 4,342 And then I also ripped 254 That's the centre mark of the T. So if you wanted to find the exact centre of the T, it's 254mm all directions. So now I'm just, I've had to slow down the video so I can explain what's happening. I've measured the overall, I've taken it away from what the overall the pipe has to be, which leaves me 60mm. But I know on the drawing the T has a flange going straight onto this side here, you see me standing. And that is a measurement of 300mm. So if I do 300mm, I think I should be typing it in there, 300mm minus the 254 which gives me the centre of the T, it leaves me 46mm so I know the flange has to hang off 46mm in order to give me the centre mark to the T which is 300mm overall. So now I'm doing 60mm minus the 46mm which gives me 15mm to hang on for the flange on the other side. I hope you guys could keep up with that. Um, sometimes this math can be a bit confusing but now like I said now this flange has to hang off 46 mil to make the measurement from the face of this flange to the center of the T be in 300 mil overall but I forgot to um, hit record while I was tacking it so there's going to be a bit of a jump so I think here's the initial tack I think I have to chop that off and then re-tack it because I've done it wrong I've received some comments on my Instagram asking how do I know these pipes can bolt together? It works because the industry follows a rule, two holes top. So if you look on my flange, there's two free bolt holes um, that are at the top. All pipes are made in that same way that you always have two free holes. So everything can be butted together and be rotated in increments of 90 degrees. So this pipe here, if I was to stand it up, 90 degrees still be two holes top if I was to do one hole top for example then everything will be at a 22 and a half degree um, or 45 degree increment which just throws everything off so rule of thumb everyone does it two holes top and then everything can always butt together 90 degrees or horizontally or vertically to each other I work alone so checking the overall length of the pipe is hard. So here's a little hack 
It doesn't always work, but it does work good when it does work. You use your level, and then you just use your magnet on the level to hold the tape measure. But you've got to be very delicate to pull it through, and then you can uh, make sure the overall's good. And then here, just double check in, making sure that's 300 mil. It's very slow going, but I'm working on a video showing you lot how I make my counterbalances. But it's pretty simple to counterbalance your pipe. Just let go of it. If the pipe settles to the bottom, then you know the pipe's heavy. Pull out your counterbalances. If the counterbalances settle down and they are the heaviest thing, slide them in. And just when it just naturally settles, then you know it's balanced. But it's not perfect. The bearings in my rollers, they're not all that good. The wheels are too small that it doesn't completely find its natural equilibrium. Now the hardest part of the pipe's done. All I have to do now is weld it together if the fabrication is wrong, it's wrong. Nothing I can do about it now. I just have to weld it together, hope for the best. This weld's going to be completed soon, and all I've got left to do is my flange. Now, through no fault of my own, the flange weld on the T is huge, it's a big gap. Now, I could have put a sliver in it, but I don't design these systems. Whoever done it on the computer, obviously they can't see what it looks like in real life. In, in On the computer, it may be hanging on by a few mil, but the bevel of the pipe and real life scenarios, it's got a big gap. I get paid for every weld that I do, so I'm not about to put a sliver of pipe in there and not get paid for it because it's not on the system. So I'm just gonna go through with it try my best, use all my skills to, to weld this flange and hope for the best. It did come out okay. At one point I did blow through it, the gap just got too big and I think I'd done something inconsistent with my hand which allowed the metal to build up and just drop through. But it weren't, not, it weren't bad, all I done was quickly rooted the rest of the pipe and I went back over my, my um, blow through and then carried on welding and it came out good. Now there's a, there's a huge debate whether you should push your welds or drag your welds. I ain't going to get into it, I have success doing both. Uh, all I'm going to say, technology's moving on all the time, systems are moving forward all the time. At one point, MIG welding pipe was unheard of. People thought it weren't, it weren't possible. Um, but now look at it now. My machine that I use is a, it's over £10,000. It makes beautiful welds and people are often surprised when they see the quality of it and they, because as far as they're aware MIG welders are cheap um, DIY welders that you've got in your garden and any type of weld that you do is subpar but there's a lot of technology with these machines and yeah just be open minded when it comes to MIG welding it's, it's not as, it's not as um, old school as you may think It was inevitable that it was going to blow through. I should have rooted it first of all, but that's extra time. To, to root all the way around it would have took a few minutes, a few minutes that I didn't have. I just wanted this pipe to be done, so like I said before, I can get paid for it. But there was no harm done. It's been welded together, it's finished now. And then I can move on to welding the outside flange. I did have to grind back the outside flange just ever so slightly for any bits of metal that worked its way through just so it didn't affect the cap on the outside but yeah this, kept, this weld came out good it looks nice Well guys, the video is getting wrapped up now. I'm going to leave you a lot to watch the rest of the arc shots. So if you've got any questions, drop them down in the comments below. DM me on Instagram. I can get back to them faster. If you um, enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you a lot in the next one.
Thank you.